This is without a doubt one of the creepiest places in Fallout 4, Dunwich Boars. And not only that, we'll get a legendary item and a bobblehead for traversing this old mine. Currently occupied by raiders under the command of Slag from the Saugus Ironworks. Uh, although they aren't forged, it is implied that they are part of his gang, or at least under his command. There's a little lift you can use to get from either side, and there's about 15 raiders that you'll have to deal with, one of which in power armor, before you make it down to the base. Now, this old quarry has plenty of secrets, so let's head straight on in. The entrance is on the eastern side here at the bottom, and if we just crawl our way all down to here we can uncover the creepy mystery of this place it is eerie that's one thing for sure the soundtrack as you play when you go through it is even creepier and that elevator is where we will exit at the end don't mind the rumbles they are a regular occurrence here if you stand on the bathroom scale this grenade will go off so try and not do that Let's have a read of Station 1. Communication. There's a wee urgent message from Bob Stanson. Remember the names of these managers? It'll make more sense as we get deeper into the place. Bob, you're needed immediately down at Station 4. We'll explain when you get here. That's from the management. As to the management, uh, Bob Stanson requests support beams, which was denied. Uh, thanks for extra padding at Station 1. And Station 1's output is the highest it's ever been. You're doing great work, everyone. So Bob is clearly having a good time up here. We'll continue to produce good cuts from this section. Ventilation excellent, morale good, incident free th for 93 days. So obviously Bob's running a tight ship here in Station 1. Things are going well. If you go into safety first, it is various things about reminding people to wear eye protection as uh, you can lose an eye from some of the machinery and flan rocks. And if they need to, they'll bring in the last eyeball they recovered as an example. Falling debris is also mentioned and that as a cost cutting solution, they have decided to not put as many support beams up. So, you know, give it some time and if the rumbles pass, well, they're not going to put up any more of them. As for railings, again, they are deemed to be costly and they will use as little as possible. They've had several incidents involving workers falling to their deaths, especially near Station 2, and you'll see why later on. And at the time, they want to remind workers to be careful and to not lean on the railings, as some of them are rusted out and may no longer be stable. Nice. Upcoming events, it mentions a happy hour. Uh, please join us at the pit, station 3. For another happy hour, drinks will be provided, and as always, the bill will be split from you all and taken out of next week's paycheck. So no need to bring cash. Please drink responsibly. We don't want a repeat of what happened involving Jerry falling to his death. The annual picnic is brought up this year, held near the entrance of the quarry. Rain or shine, feel free to bring a dish of any kind. New cola will be provided if you are bringing children. Please keep an eye on them, especially if you're going near the quarry ledge. To prevent a repeat of last year's occurrence, we are excited to announce we've struck a deal with Robco and they will be providing an extra sentry bot to keep order. So clearly things mustn't have went too well last time. Uh, turret control and spotlight control is uh, active from there. And as we pass by all the raiders, you're faced with a choice. If you go up here, there is a little supply room with the trap you can hop on over. And uh, it'll get you some cams and a wee duffel bag. If you choose to go back, we can go deeper into the bowels of Dunwich. I also found in Fallout 3, this place was as equally creepy there as it is now. Station 2 gives a slightly different communique. Uh, basically, John Hatfield, who was the manager here, was told to get to Station 4. Again, remember his name. And he mentions about the new upgrade to his machine, output increasing by 5% from the last week and then steady good quality cuts from the last couple of months traffic from station 3 continues to slow down i suspect traffic will cease to be a problem on station 3 and 4 receive their materials again everything else in the terminal we just read on the last one so these raiders are progressively paranoid as you go on down and now we have reached station 3 it's being used by someone else? No, it is now being used by us. Communication. This is an urgent message to Bradley Ramon. 
uh, needed at Station 4. Again, Bradley was clearly required for something. He was requesting railings because uh, another guy nearly fell in, because this is definitely the pit. John at Station 2 continues to complain about our crew for slow production. No matter what I tell him, he brings it up with you. Can someone talk to him? We need the equipment. Alright, so everything seems above board. And if we turn on the circuit breaker, you can get some lights into the pit. Of course, that will alert everyone to your presence. And if you prefer fighting in the dark, then maybe the Batman-style approach might be better for you. As we get to the bottom here, we can find Bedlam, one of Slag's associates, uh, currently wandering about trying to keep morale up. Bingo. The astoundingly awesome tails can be picked up on the bench, don't miss it. You'll get 5% less damage from robots, which will be helpful for the rest of your playthrough. There's also a steamer trunk for you to pick up, and if you're very keen-eyed whilst you're walking about here, there's even a mini nuke on top of these rocks here. Again, a keen eye. Once you get it, that's a nice wee find for you. Now, this is where things continue to get creepy. The enemies turn from raiders to ghouls. Plenty of ghouls. As you wander down, they will certainly make themselves known through all the little tiny corners as you wander on. Yeah, they are definitely not to be messed with. Turning on the circuit breaker will activate the lights, but again, we'll make sure all the ghouls know exactly where you are. This door has an activate ability. When you press it, you'll be greeted by a flashback to the pre-war era, where it seems some people are carting out materials. However, when you reach it, there will just be ghouls and a fork in the road. The lights mysteriously turn off. Turn them on. And the left route is the exit, and the route to the right here takes us deeper into the mine where we want to go. Turn on circuit breakers brings a bit of light, but brings ghoul attention, so bear that in mind. Bingo. The sneak bobblehead can be found here, permanently 10% harder to detect. Combine that with US Covert Ops manuals, and you'll be very difficult to find. Safety first, we've read through that, upcoming events, but if we eject the tape from Tim's shoots, we can have a little listen. So obviously Tim was in on something, and if we go in here, we can find exactly what it is. Looks like some ancient ritual site was taking place, but then we find several ghouls that will all jump at you. We have Bradley, we have John Hatfield, we have Bob Stanson, they'll all emerge to give you a bit of a greeting here. And that's not where the adventure ends. No, no, no. Even Tim's here, so clearly he wasn't that in on it. Removing the water, you can find that there's a very large statue staring at you. Quite creepy. But if you continue on swimming, you can not only find this little altar, but you can find yes. Krem's Tooth, a really awesome and exceptionally powerful melee weapon, as well as two mini nukes. Pick them up, and we can venture back on out of this rather creepy place. Remember that fork in the road? Well, you'll want to take a left and start marching your way all to the top. Be sure to check every corner. There'll be ghouls, but there'll also be plenty of supplies. And a staircase to freedom. Make sure you've brought something to deal with the horrific amount of ghouls you're going to find at each of these points. But, now that we've reached the final place, you can get the key of this raider, unlock the door, and we can take the star lift back down to the bottom. And that completes Dunwich, one of the uh, creepier places in the game. Of course, we all know where it is. It's found just beside Hugo's Hole and south of Coastal Cottage. Thank you so much for watching. Catch us all in the next one.